Okay, you're live. Okay, great. Well, thank you everyone for joining our second in the blockchain employment series that uh, we've been doing. So myself, Bobby Mascara and Jim Mason have uh, been doing this series one time before, it was very successful. And now we're looking forward to doing the fall series here. And you can see Bobby put up the fall 2021 matching qualified applicants with blockchain opportunities. And so we're going to have really a great uh, panel discussion today. And then also Bobby's gonna go through and give us a lot of great updates. And she's got some really exciting news around uh, the executive director role for Hyperledger, as well as the TSC. And uh, then we've got you know our great guests today, which are gonna include Jody uh, from DTCC, William from Consensus, Arslan from Accenture and David from SimbaChain. So at this point, I'm gonna turn it over to Bobby and kind of let her go through the uh, slide deck that she has in the presentation. And then once she wraps that up, then we're gonna go ahead and cut over right to the panel discussion. And then uh, Jim Mason's gonna give us some wrap up and also be able to talk to us about the next great event that we have coming up very shortly. So Bobby, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to you. Uh, thank you, John, and welcome everybody to the first in a four part series for this fall um, on blockchain jobs uh, and careers and employment. Um, so we are hosting this blockchain employee as part of the um, Hyperledger meetups. Um, I host the Princeton meetup, John hosts the Denver meetup and Jim Mason hosts the um, Boston meetup. And along with uh, David Boswell at Hyperledger, we put these on for the members of Hyperledger so that they can one, uh, get employees and showcase their jobs and two, for the people in the community so they can actually apply what they've been learning and what they've been doing. Um, so again, this is, um, <clears throat> excuse me, a Linux Foundation sponsored event. So this is the antitrust policy. Please read it over. Um, it's on your screen. And basically it just talks about how, um, you know, blockchain's a new industry and there's a lot of people from the same sectors talking um, in non-competitive environments, which um, implies a different kind of respect and communication. So that just kind of will outline how, you know, you need to respect other people's, you know, intellectual properties in, in these calls. Um, and also there's a code of conduct, which just talks about how you can behave civilly in humanity. Um, so those things are there for you, but let's get started. I'm sure everybody had a chance to read that. Um, so this is the first in a four-part series where we're going to talk about what's going on in um, blockchain careers and in blockchain development. Um, and then John's going to talk um, with some experts who are hiring um, for these positions and, and ask them the tough questions like, what do you need? How many jobs? You know, the, the things that people need to know in order to get these positions. So I know we've been over this a little bit, but again, um, I run Ledger Academy. This is a BC employee. There's a website to support this. So you can always go to the website. It's been a work in progress for months and it will catch up to the information it has uh, shortly. And again, it's a Hyperledger event. Um, the three of us are from the meetups and those are our respected meetups. So um, our information is, will be in the chat at the end if you need to reach out and grab us. So right now I'm just gonna go over some events that are happening in the community. This is a three part series. If you wanna take a picture of this screen, it shows you the dates for the next uh, three so you don't miss them. Uh, and again, uh, John's hosting the first one. Uh, Jim hosts the second one where it's more geared towards what the employers um, are looking for and their hiring policies and that information. And then um, my third one is from Princeton and we talk about, are you ready? What does your LinkedIn profile look like? Do you have the skills? Where can you get the skills to meet the employers in the career fair at the end? Um, so that is uh, how these run. Um, again, it's a four part series. So big news in Hyperledger. We'll talk about some things going on in that community. And again, new leadership, um, Brian Bellendorf passed the reins to Daniela. Um, these are two of my favorite people in Hyperledger. 
uh, Daniela actually came to my office in Tiger Labs and sat down and chat with me. So she was like one of the first people before the Global Forum from Hyperledger. I actually met face to face, which was really cool. Um, and Brian, I wouldn't be um, in the leadership roles on in, in Hyperledger if it wasn't for his support. He nominated me for the TSC last year. So again, these are two of my favorite people. I'm very sad to see Brian go, but I know Daniela is you know, ready for the new position. And then again, we were talking briefly in the beginning networking session. If you are a Hyperledger member and made contributions, you have one more day to vote for the new TSC. Um, and the nomination statements are on um, the Technical Steering Committee's wiki page. I have a link to that at the end as well. So get out and vote. If you got a ballot, please fill it out tonight or tomorrow because it ends tomorrow. Um, and then we have just more news from Hyperledger. Uh, the White House Task, White Paper Greenhouse Task Force uh, has come to a completion. So we have decided to uh, redo the uh, greenhouse graphic that depict what um, Hyperledger um, products and projects look like. Um, and now we're doing it more in a landscape. This will be on the, um, there's a link to it there, but it'll be part of the uh, website soon where each one of these cards is clickable. It's automatically updated with project information, use cases, everything each one of the projects are working on and it gets propagated to all the proper wiki pages and wherever. So it's an easy way for everybody to communicate what's going on as well as I mean, it's a great view of the Hyperledger landscape to see, you know, kind of like in a visual of what's going on there. So that's um, Hyperledger. Tomorrow, if you're around, there are three events going on in the community. They're all on the community calendar. Um, the Giving Chain meeting is our technical meeting, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, where did the Giving Chain go? I lost a slide. Anyway, uh, oh no, it's coming up. Um, and also there is a big October 19th uh, climate action um, event. Please go to that. Um, everybody has experience in climate action because we all breathe. So if you don't think you have qualifications to be in that call, take a deep breath and join the call. Um, and then, oh yes, yeah, so this is the other project that um, I'm working on and it is the Giving Chain. A lot of people have heard about this project. We are trying to build a platform uh, for charity giving so that when you have um, an, a want and a need, there'll be a platform there for you to make your donations go from uh, the donor to the recipient um, in a decentralized, uh, visible way. Um, so this project got a lot of um, good press. So it became a mentorship project with Hyperledger over the summer. The mentorship project runs out in November. Um, and as a conclusion to that project, we give presentations. So the October 26th is a presentation we're giving at the social impact um, SIG. The mentorship has a final ceremony. That's November 12th. We'll, we'll hopefully demo the product. Uh, we've come pretty far. We're, we're almost there. Um, and then a final trade finance because they were very interested in how this worked um, with NFTs because we're using NFTs to track donations. Um, so they wanted to see how that works. So they've been um, letting us have some time. So right now, The Giving Chain, we're working on the user interfaces. There's a website, www.thegivingchain.org. Um, it's right now kind of moving towards being the interface for the project from being a donation um, event. And the technical working group meets tomorrow. Um, they're working on um, the user interfaces and the back end. And the general meeting is on Monday. And all of this project is only happening because of the people at Firefly, which is the newest project in um, Hyperledger's uh, landscape. It is a blockchain as a service and they are fabulous team players and are helping us incredibly. So if you can hop on any information on Firefly, I would grab it, read it. And, and it's a great, great new coming up um, project for Hyperledger. Um, and then this is just a shameless plug for my meetup. Um, I have a Princeton meetup with a few people um, and it's just a blockchain fun meetup. We do fun things. 
And on Wednesday, um, we're going to tour Ledger Academy's facilities um, in Agora Metaverse. So we will go into the Metaverse and we will hold part of the um, event in the Metaverse. And everyone on the event is willing to join us in the room if they so feel like it. Um, and we'll, we'll see all art galleries and learning environments. And it's gonna be a lot of fun. We're hoping that works too. Um, so that's about it for the events. And again, if you have any events you want posted in the Hyperledger community, just shoot me an email. I'll put that in the chat at the end um, and I can post them on the Hyperledger um, wiki pages. So that's about it for um, the current events. And now quickly, I'm just gonna talk about why we're here. So again, this um, map is fuzzy, so don't try to look at it, but it just shows that all across the country in uh, 26, at least 26 spots, there's viable blockchain projects being adopted or have been adopted. And if you want um, information on this, you can go to the Irish Tech News um, this will only this graphic will only clear up when you pay for a subscription, which is wicked brilliant in my opinion. So we can't see the graphic because I'm not paying for the Irish news, but I'm telling you that's a great model for getting a subscription because I really want to see what they have to say on that graphic. Um, another graphic to show you what's going on is in 2028, this market's going to be um, incredible. I mean, compared to where it is now, just the amount of growth and all of that growth needs to be supported by human people um, is incredible. Again, and it's happening in every sector, um, especially banking and financial services. Um, but, you know, telecom and media are quick and uh, closing the gap quickly with this NFT and these new ideas, which again, if you want to learn more about them, Wednesday, the 20th. Um, so that basically, again, to sum it all up, um, Cointelegraph uh, cited an Indeed article that said from last year, the increase in jobs in blockchain was 118%, and that was just in one year. And that technical positions, if you put a blockchain um, element into your resume or into your portfolio, you get paid so much more um, for the same job. So that's just interesting as well. So again, what are the roles? We're gonna go over these very quickly. So again, there's certain roles that um, come with blockchain and then there's roles that are existing that transfer to blockchain. So real quick, we got the consultant, which is I'm trying, I do these kind of in order in which a blockchain project would need them. So like a consultant would be to sit down with an aerotech company or a supply chain company and sit down and talk about the different blockchains available. Do you need tokens? Do you need private? Do you need, you know, they would get to those questions because there's different kinds of blockchains that can be put together in different ways. So a consultant would know all of those things and try to build the best solution for your use case. Then there's the developer. Now these, this is like the, the heart of the people. There's two types of developers and it's really confusing, but the first type of developer are the people who are building the blockchain platforms. They're writing the code that um, uh, Solana runs on, um, Hyperledger runs on, Ethereum runs on. They all need code to run the blockchain platform that we use. Um, what we use are applications off of those blockchain platforms. So you also need somebody to develop the applications. But if you don't have the developers to develop the blockchains, the applications run on, you don't have anything. So there's, there's two parts, like a higher level developer and then an applications developer. Um, and again, that's why I found from ZipRecruiter this little piece of information quite interesting. Um, the range is enormous, but again, it's, it's the high end of blockchain jobs, um, just saying. And it's, it's very interesting to me um, how much that is paying anyone who has developer experience. Um, and then the architect. So now you have um, this great solution um, and the architect is the person who sits down with you and says, um, what kind of cryptography do you need? How uh, identity is a big part of getting everybody involved in a blockchain. How are you gonna identify your users? How are they gonna have certain rights to the blockchain? 
Uh, what do those rights look like? Um, how are you going to identify your people? Do you need tokens, not tokens? So they build the infrastructure that this thing runs on. And then you have the administrators. Those are the people who have level, you know, knowledge of uh, Linux Foundation um, products, containers, Docker images, that kind of stuff. Versions, you have to know which version works with which version. Um, and that has to keep moving because once the blockchain is implemented, things are changing all the time. So the administrator would be the one who says, you know, we need to upload this. We need to download this. This new smart contract is coming in. Um, they would be in charge of that type of information. Um, and then the engineer, again, the engineer is part of all these processes. So a blockchain engineer can be a blockchain developer, a blockchain engineer can be a, but the role of the engineer is something that um, is very high level and it is more of your risk management role, which is vital. Um, so again, that is, you know, um, a high level position as well. But don't fear, those are just like the, the technical positions. There's a ton of entry level positions that if you're interested and not sure, you wanna switch careers right away. Um, there's so many ways you can get um, it onboarded into communities because um, they're open source. So they have working groups, they have hackathons, they have all kinds of stuff. So if you're interested, um, we can, we'll show you at the end a little bit of how to get um, on-ramped into communities that can help advance your career. But that's not just the only jobs. There's all kinds of, there's data scientists, there's web designers for new web three, there's um, NFT graphic artists, who knew? Um, data storage specialists, oh boy. blockchain managers. So there's a whole lot of positions. Even with our, we're getting close to our panel. So even with our panel today, I just went through and saw jobs at consensus. There's creative jobs, there's administrator jobs. I saw jobs at Accenture, uh, product managers, all types of jobs. Uh, Simba Chain, they're looking for DevOps and developers. Um, and even uh, DTCC has jobs. I mean, there's jobs everywhere. And to get trained for these jobs, it's such an interesting open source environment that I've never seen anything like it in education. But the education courses are available, complimentary. You just have to put the work in. Um, it's like your first year in college. Um, so if you have to uh, get through it, you have to do the work. So again, these are free courses from the Linux Foundation. Um, that one's just a basic blockchain course. Um, that one teaches the Hyperledger products um, in, a, in a high overview of what they do and how they function. Um, and then again, um, if you want to be an administrator in Hyperledger, you can sit and take this entire course complimentary. But if you want the certificate for your LinkedIn page, you would need to sit for the course and that you need to pay the fee for. Um, so all these courses run like that. If you want to sit for the exam, you have to pay for the fee. And again, there's a Fabric, fabric Developers course, um, Identity Solutions course. Aries will help you build the wallets to hold the tokens that represent this um, new way to transfer identity and verifications. Sawtooth has an, an applications developer and Besu has a, has a class that just came out too. So all of these, again, you can sit in and take, but if you want the certification, you have to pay the fee for the exam. Consensus has the same thing. I wouldn't even begin to get into the consensus classes because I ran out of space on my screen. So they have a ton of classes. Again, Accenture offers uh, working groups and to join these um, efforts that they're doing in blockchain. And again, they have, uh, DTCC has a huge learning center where if you wanna learn anything, you can just drop down the category and get to information. So there's no reason not to understand blockchain because the courses are out there. So with that said, I'm going to turn this over to John and he's going to introduce the panel. Yeah, thank you very much, Bobby. You did a superior run through on everything there. And as everyone can see, there's a wealth of opportunity, great jobs within the blockchain space, and really a variety of skill sets that are actually required. So whatever skill set that you're bringing to the table today, there is a role for you in the blockchain space. So at this point, uh, I wanna go ahead and get into our panel discussion. So what I'm gonna have everyone do on the panel is just go through and do a quick introduction about themselves and then we'll get into the discussion. So I'm gonna kick it off with 
uh, Jody Panapali from DTCC. So Jody, over to you for your introduction. Thank you, John. Um, before I introduce myself, I would like to introduce DTCC. Um, for those who don't know, or for those who know as well, uh, we are a financial services company that provides clearing and settlement services for uh, financial markets. And we um, settle transactions in the US and uh, uh, it, just to put volume and numbers to it, we settle on most of our trillion transactions a day. So just to just to set the levels of the uh, you know the volume of uh, security settlements that we handle as a company. And why is that important? Is because it boosts investor confidence and reduces the financial markets risk. That's the space we are in. And. Um, Having said that, me specifically, I um, work for the Global uh, Chief Risk Office at DPCC. Uh, I've been working for them for more than about three years, but I've been in the blockchain space, gosh, <laughs> seems like a lifetime now. Um, and I was actually smiling through Bobby's presentation of how the uh, titles have evolved in blockchain because when I started off, there was just one title said blockchain's me and companies didn't know what else to ask for. And now, you know, the entire space has evolved into defining and creating those profiles and roles that can specifically address the needs of today's job market. Um, but um, so I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to answer any questions. And, um, um, and, and just to set the, uh, you know, expectation of what the market volume looks like is we have been at DTCC pioneering blockchain initiatives since 2015. And we are a proud member of Hyperledger since its inception. In fact, our one of our leadership is the uh, chairman of the board for Hyperledger uh, Foundation. So we've been very closely tied with Hyperledger. We have internally leveraged many frameworks and tools, in fact, almost all of them to say. Um, so we are one of those companies that within the financial services industries has led the path into blockchain evolution and, uh, and blockchain leveraging the value that these networks give. I would like to take a pause there and thank you for everyone for joining us today. Yeah, thank you, Jody. I think that was an exceptional run through and really gave us a good background on yourself as well as DTCC. And uh, at this point, I'd like to go ahead and jump over to David from SimbaChain. And we have David Wasson from SimbaChain. So David, you wanna come off mute and uh, go through and give a little introduction about SimbaChain and yourself. Yeah, absolutely, John. Thank you and uh, really happy to be here. Thanks for inviting us. So yes, I'm with Simba Chain. Um, Simba Chain uh, it's been around about almost four years now, and um, we just actually had our Series A, so it was an unexpected um, success, very successful uh, Series A. But Simba Chain is um, about um, it's really about enabling um, developers, but also non-developers to be able to access the benefits of blockchain. So we have designed a tool that's a visual tool. It's kind of the basis of our of our suite of uh, solutions. But it's a visual tool for you to build out, model your use case, and then automatically generate code and APIs and deploy that out to blockchain. And uh, we have three main groups within the company. We have a, a government group. That's how we got started initially was through a DARPA grant. Uh, but we have a, a successful government group working with the DOD and the Department of Energy, uh, also the Australian government. We're, we also have a group um, that's an enterprise. That's more of our business enterprise solutions. And we work with companies like Tokes, uh, Boeing, Dow, Caterpillar. And, and then we also have an education group because our tool is so easy to use. Uh, it's a really, um, it's a really uh, useful way to have professors teach students about how blockchain works because blockchain is, tends to be a little bit abstract. And by actually creating your own smart, smart contracts and deploying apps, it's a really great way to learn. Um, so I, I actually am with the business development group. Um, I take care of the enterprise business here at um, Simba Chain and also the education practice. Um, I'm based on the West Coast. Most of my experience has been in enterprise software, both operations and business development. And let's see, I'll just say the other thing is we are in a position where we're aggressively hiring right now. Um, we, we have a very aggressive hiring plan for the balance of this year and going into next year. And I'm looking forward to telling you all about that in a bit. Perfect. Well, thanks, David. And 
Yeah, Simba's really come a long way, and congratulations on your Series A. Uh, great overview. Uh, so next, I'd like to go over to William Lepofsky, and he's with Consensus, and he can talk a little bit about Consensus as a de design development shop, as well as his background. So William, over yep. to you. Hey everybody, uh, my name is William Lepofsky. Uh, I've been working in uh, both agency and corporate recruiting in the technology and hedge fund space for over a decade. Um, and before that, I actually studied computer science and econ economics at Columbia University. Um, and so for the, for the last three years, I've been a senior talent partner at Consensus, um, which is a remote first software engineering leader in the blockchain space. Um, so I've mostly been focused on building out the protocol engineering team, which is the home of Hyperledger Besu. Um, but our products also include the crypto wallet MetaMask, developer tools including Infura, Truffle, Codify, Trium, and, and several others. Um, we're actually wrapping up our Series A right now, um, and uh, uh, we're our funding round and having a goal of hiring over 800 people in the next 12 to 18 months. Uh, so wow. we're super aggressively hiring in a lot of different areas. Um, I think one thing that I wanted to reiterate from uh, from earlier in the discussion here is that. Um, there's tons of jobs out there. Uh, we're a technology company. You know, we happen to work in the blockchain space. Uh, but what we need are people who are in the technology space who, are, who want to get into the blockchain space for the most part, right? So um, you don't have to be an expert to get in to, into, these, into these roles. What you have to do is have an intense interest in getting up to speed about like how, how does this knowledge affect the job that I'm going to be doing, right? So... <clears throat> Like for just for an example, most of the people that I recruit for the uh, protocol engineering team um, are mostly uh, long term enterprise Java engineers um, and people who are really excited to get into the blockchain space and really understand a new way to organize data um, and and to be able to help people build out these these new uh, uh, new products. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to talk a little bit more about what we've got going on here and um, uh, excited to be here. Thanks, John. Yeah, thank you, William. And Consensus has really been a great contributor as far as Hyperledger Besu, and uh, has really been a great, uh, successful project. And we appreciate all the hard work and effort that Consensus has done to help build out Hyperledger. Uh, next, I want to go over to Arslan Khalid, and he's with Accenture. And Arslan, you want to talk a little bit about your background as well as Accenture and the great projects that Accenture has been doing in the blockchain space. Absolutely. Thank you, John, for that intro. Uh, can folks hear me okay? Just a quick mic check. You sound great. Yep. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Uh, greetings, folks. Good evening. Ho hope this finds you all well, uh, safe in your, in your home, uh, wherever you're listening from. Um, I am a blockchain engineering consulting manager at Accenture. Uh, if you're not familiar, a global consulting firm that focuses in several uh, different industries, um, you know, working groups, and you're, we've been very passionate and, and connected in the in the blockchain space. I would say since about 2014, 2013. A little bit of background on myself: I live now in NYC and work in our uh, New York. Uh, blockchain practice and, and lead a capability there, but originally from Toronto, Canada. And as many of you know, uh, I'd like to, I guess, say that passionately, you know, Ethereum and, and much of the blockchain developments that occurred globally, uh, a lot of it was from Toronto and, and seeing that community grow, being a part of that community um, has been a big part of, of how I've been able to you know, grow in this space. And I think even for others, as they contribute to their local communities and, and get involved there. Um, but from there, uh, at, at Accenture, we've worked on you know several global initiatives uh, in the financial space. Um, uh, see a few clients already on this call um, with respect to also different industries like travel, identity, things of that nature, uh, with a very engineering technical focus, whilst also having a strategic uh, focus in terms of picking the right use cases and thinking about true uh, long-term viability as it relates to building uh, software or, or technology using blockchain as a multi-party uh, objective. So we've really relabeled what we call blockchain within Accenture as multi-party systems uh, and just look forward to talking more about that with you all and, and exploring you know, just the journey that you know, I've personally taken and, and would love to share um, learnings on that. Thank you. Yeah, perfect. Arslan, I think that was a great segue into kind of my first question for the panel here is really uh, looking at 
the individual personal journey that you've had, you know, you're all leaders and experts in the blockchain space. And I think anyone that's really joining this session today wants to understand, you know, what is the journey like or what is your personal journey to get to be engaged with the blockchain space? So I think at this point, I'll just go ahead and uh, go back to Jody and let her talk a little bit more about her journey because she's been in the space for quite a long time. So Jody, tell us a little bit about that. Thank you, John. Well, I have to go down a memory lane now <laughs> because <laughs> I, feel, I feel like I've grown so much in just the past couple of years. So, um, so I used to have like a previous life, as, as I said, and in that previous life, actually my career in IT started with, uh, with the onset of internet and truly how corporate uh, uh, corporates realize the value of internet, like building of that networks, right? Mm -hmm. And that was a journey I started my career with. I got really lucky creating collaborations for companies that could now digitally share information and create that knowledge. Um, you know, it was it was like a revolution because it was a new concept. Uh, collaboration was a very new concept in the year 2001 to 2003 for companies to be able to share information digitally over networks. So now we had these companies that like from, you know, USA could send uh, data over to Japan or Asia or talk to people and, you know, create collaborate on, on a digital platform asynchronously, which was like a revolution. Mm -hmm. And over the years you know as but at that time somehow i felt like it was barely you know uh, the scratch on the surface of the concept of collaboration per se i lived in that space for like more than a decade and i lived through the pain points of what companies couldn't achieve um, was caught cross corporate collaboration so my first brush with Blockchain was Bitcoin like most of everybody. And it was like early in the 2012, 2013s. And, you know, when you hold a U.S. passport and when you, you know, trade in U.S. currency in dollars, you, it's, it's, it's like the most powerful currency and the most powerful passport. So, so like just like, you know, any other normal person, I skeptically questioned the, the, the ability for Bitcoin to be able to go against a sovereign currency or a fiat currency. And then I was like, mm, maybe, you know, and around my real love for blockchain was around 2014, 2015, when the underlying technology was abstracted out and it was it was invented that we could leverage the technology for companies in an enterprise setup. That was the bingo moment for me because now here was this technology that could take away the pain points of my 15 years of career prior to that. And that for me, the transition at that point was very organic. Like I fell in love. Now I could see the barriers and, and the corporate boundaries dropping. And now the concept of collaboration is realized in its true sense. But we've come a long way since 2014. Um, uh, we've, you know, at, at that point, there were still some, some limitations. But what I see is personally that this space is evolving at a very rapid pace because the ask and the value of these technologies is immense. The impact it can give for industries is like far and wide. So I'm, I'm going to be here. This is going to be my life for the next rest of my career, definitely. Um, yeah, no, that's perfect, Jody. Uh, and it sounds like you really, you know, were well immersed in technology and were attracted to the new innovations and really kind of the disruption of the technology. So. And also, you know, the ongoing innovation, because like you say, blockchain is a young technology stack, but uh, it's a great place for further innovation, for sure. Absolutely. And, and, and just to, you know, tag on that point is I've lived through the hype cycle. I've lived through that skepticism from the market saying, okay, now we, you know, it's, it's, it's this year, it's the end of this year, it's the end of blockchain. I think we have way past that. Now it's, it's, it's all about, 
building the networks of those networks and realizing that value that these technologies can give companies. Perfect. Yeah, that's awesome, Jody. Uh, William, I'm going to go over to you. And I know you have a wealth of experience over a decade of recruiting in technology and finance. So why don't you tell me a little bit about, you know, how your journey came over to consensus and, you know, wanted to really jump in with both feet to blockchain. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, when I started my career, I didn't think that I would get into recruiting. I was a computer science programmer, developer, that sort of thing, and uh, just kind of fell into it. Um, said I was going to do it for a year while I was getting my master's and then ended up really liking it um, and really got to learn more about the space that I was recruiting for um, in this way, talking to people about their roles, talking to people about what they're doing. Um, and that's exactly how I found blockchain. Um, I was, you know, in the hedge fund space, and then I moved into the technology space, and then I moved into the blockchain space. Um, and it was, I just really enjoy learning about new, uh, brand new types of technologies and things that are going on. Um, and I was somebody who came to um, this role with very little information about what was actually being done at Consensus at the time. Um, and I just dove headfirst into it. I went to Ethereum.org. I read the white paper. I was doing, uh, you know, for Ethereum. I was uh, looking through books. Like uh, it just immediately, um, you know, hit me as something that I really was interested in. So, um, you that's that's one thing that um, I think is a, a common thread throughout um, the blockchain space. Blockchain space, as far as the technology, is not old, right? Uh, the idea of a blockchain expert is very brand new. <laughs> you know, it's, a blockchain expert is somebody who's been in the field for what a decade or less, right? So. Um, you know, don't, you don't have to feel like there's any sort of gatekeeping to this industry. There's none. Uh, what we want are people who are excited, people who have skill sets to bring to this, um, you know, general, uh, general facility and be able to add things to whatever the company themselves is, is building. For us, it's different technology products. For somebody else, it might be consulting services. Um, so it's really, uh, I think, the big thing to, to make sure that you understand is that blockchain isn't this big, scary topic. It's really, um, it's really a, a new way of framing old jobs. Yeah, no, that's perfect. And just like you talked about the Java engineers that are a lot of them looking at the blockchain space and saying, you know, I'm great at uh, Java development, but I want to try something new and exciting. And so, you know, that that's kind of why they're attracted to blockchain and wanting to work for consensus. So yeah, that's perfect. Well, thanks. Uh, appreciate that, uh, William. I'm going to jump over to David now. And uh, so, David, why don't you tell me a little bit about your journey to coming to work with Simba Chain and uh, how you're excited about the blockchain space as well? Yeah, absolutely, John. And there's been some great things said. And I'll, I'll, I'll just want to echo something William said. So in blockchain, it seems to me like is you either have kind of a passion for it or, or you're really not interested in it, but there's those that really get bit by the bug and they just can't get enough of it. And that's what happened to me. But um, so, so I have a degree in economics. I don't have a technical degree. And I thought to myself, how would I ever get into blockchain? But here I am. Um, but most of my experience has been in software uh, enterprise sales and operations. But in 2016, I was working for a firm that had a technology in serialization, and we were using serialization to track and trace uh, prescription drugs through the supply chain. And in 2016, that kind of evolved into, um, what if we use blockchain to do that provenance and that track and trace? So that's how I was introduced to it. Um, that company ended up not really pursuing blockchain, but I still wanted to pursue blockchain. I was you know, literally studying it at night and attending meetups. Um, there weren't a lot of ways to learn about blockchain back then either. Today, you have a, a really great assortment of different online education and, and universities that have programs and even degrees in it. But, but in 2016, I was going to meetups. I was volunteering at, um, at events uh, like consensus and, and other local um, meetings. Um, so I, so there wasn't just a lot of choices to learn. So I, I really learned it. But I ended up working for a company after that. It was actually a, a DAO, a decentralized autonomous organization called NELS. And they're based out of Singapore. And I started their San Jose office in California. And, uh, and that was an experience, you know, literally living off being paid in cryptocurrency. And, and our entire organization was funded by the rewards off of our nodes. And um, so that was a, an experience in itself. And then, and then I moved on to, um, to Simba Chain, which is a little bit more conservative in terms of we started as a, as a DARPA grant. So we, we were spun out of uh, the Idea Center at the University of Notre Dame. 
Um, so, was, and, and we do a lot of work with the government. So it was a, a little bit different than what my experience had been in the past. Um, but again, I, I just emphasize that, you know, just learn as much as you can. It's, it, it we're still very early and I would, I would really encourage people to network, um, as much as possible because you can really, you'd be surprised at some of these events who you, who you end up having a conversation with and you find out later kind of, you know, who they are. Um, so, and, and I would suggest too, um, that you don't really need to have blockchain experience. We have a whole bunch of technical and non-technical positions open. Um, but, but blockchain is something that we can teach. And also from my, from an, for those non-technical out there, I mean, I kind of view blockchain as it is a technology revolution, but it's also even more, it's an economic and social economic, you know, revolution in the way people think about decentralizations and removing intermediaries. And so it's a different way of thinking and there's opportunities for everybody. Yeah. And that's perfect. <laughs> David, that's a great uh, segue as well. I think opportunities for everybody is really kind of a core concept that comes across. And really what I've heard from all three of you so far is excitement about blockchain, interested in the new uh, protocol and how it can be applied in business. And I think we've got a good variety of companies here that represent a lot of different paths that someone can go down regarding blockchain. So Arsalan, I'd like to go over to you now and maybe you can talk a little bit about, you know, your journey to blockchain and Accenture and kind of, you know, how Accenture views the world of blockchain and, you know, where you're coming from. Thank you, John. That's a great question. Uh, really because, you know, growing up at, at Accenture, it's, think of it as a, it's a funny term, but really just growing up in this space um, at Accenture, we, we took a stance very early on in the game and said, we aren't really going to focus on public blockchains, right? So on the, in the night, I was you know really interested and would go to these Ethereum meetups. I think uh, several of, of my peers here have, have mentioned um, about really taking part in the community, in the Ethereum space, at the conferences. That was, that was certainly uh, heavy, I think, in the last five years before uh, pre-COVID um, PC. <laughs> um, and it was just so much noise. There was always a, a conference to go to. There was white papers. There was just so much noise. There was the ICOs. Uh, and now we're in the NFT saga, which is really a repetition of that um, whole you know, disaster, but yet interesting um, event that occurred in this space. And uh, again, I come back to there was just so much noise. And, and one of the things I appreciate being at Accenture was being able to just you know, plug in the headphones and sit down and you know, focus on some of these enterprise platforms that are out there. I mean, Besu being being one major one. Um, we looked at Corda, we looked at Fabric, uh, several of the Hyperledger projects, uh, and really looked at it from one a strategic angle and said, okay, let's let's go to work with companies in the food and supply chain space, to healthcare, to banking globally, and um, help them think about what the right use cases are and what this technology is. And that's kind of where my, my journey started. I was, was working for a partner or MD that was really looking at it from a sales kind of use case education perspective. Now, I had a background in computer science and Java and software engineering. So eventually, after two years of being exposed to the consulting side of ideating use case identification, I ended up going to the Middle East to work for a bank as one of my first few projects. I had a few stints in Toronto and Canada as well and worked on this uh, project called Ripple, which I'm sure several folks are aware of now. And, um, you know, it was it was quite a journey to look at the first initial use case that was looked at in this space of payments of cross-border transactions. And I think that personally is what hooked me. And I think that's the general theme here is that, you know, what is that interesting use case that really inspire you? And, and I've had several discussions with colleagues and, and different, um, you know, friends and, and family members about what those use cases are. I mean, that I think is the core of it. Uh, for me, even personally, some of the ones that I found really interesting in the last year has been the data collection around um, you know, when you walk into a place and they ask for your number nowadays and your vaccine proof and just how paper and, and manual and repetitive that is. And I just wish we had a collaborative technology that was kind of based on a sense of blockchain that would help us provide that. But again, it all comes back to that theme of, you know, what interests you. And I think building on that passion since the last few years, it was really able to just, you know, conferences are great, but 
and and these meetups are incredible but I, I think that focus time for me was was really important uh the last few years to plug in those headphones and just write code and work with clients to build and think through what these use cases are and actually execute them and to now see in 2021 to think about production uh, and, and actually think about what does it mean for production scale. But in order to get to this point, uh, you know, I think the, the different technologies, platforms uh, that are out there, one that we've even heard on this call, uh, to even ideate, to write blogs. I mean, I, I wrote blogs on Medium. I wrote, uh, I would go to GitHub and clone projects and just play around and submit pull requests to projects like Brave, a browser, um, and just generally, you know, grew the interest yet understanding of the space. I, I started mining um, out of my parents' basement, I just nice. wanted to understand more detail. And I think that ultimately when you see that infectious passion, uh, that feeds so well to some recruiters, to um, to others in the community, to just naturally let the universe bring you that opportunity. That that's so um, fascinating. So for me, that that's kind of how the the natural progression was. I would say a lot of it was a lot of insane luck. Um, you know, I just was just there and and right time you know i was on a conference call six years ago i could remember it like it was yesterday and i had just gotten acquired by accenture i'd worked for a small consulting firm based in london england and they literally acquired our business right and you know a few months in you know you're going through that acquisition process and you're just like wow like what am i doing here you know what is my job now like i don't understand what's going on and suddenly someone mentions blockchain and and you know the, the concept of being able to share solar power using this technology consensus is working on so i start digging into this stuff researching and you know the rest is history and i would say you know there, there still is no experts now if, if somebody tells you otherwise it's we're all still learning we're all still in the journey and it's just an excellent time to divulge in it in any shape or form it doesn't have to be just as a developer um, there are so many different ways where we've looked at it from the perspective of business transformation because to truly deploy this technology you have to convince so many parties to come together to exchange information or value in this network type typology and i think that's the interesting part i mean there's a business opportunity there's technology opportunity but ultimately i will selfishly say I can just end off here. The roles that we saw listed, three of them were technical out of the, the five different potential roles that I think Bobby sure. shared earlier. So that's a really important thing to recall, even as a business person, focusing on your technology literacy as you grow, whether it's blockchain or any other place that you seek employment, that technical literacy of, of cloud, of technology, of software is just going to be all the more pivotal. And I think someone who's tried to focus on that, I, I'll tell you straight up, I'm not the the best developer in the world, but the, the technology literacy was a really big focal point for me personally. And I think that's going to continue to to progress as we you know, help shape the, the new technology future or, or, or what have you or whatever comes our way. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Arsalan. And I'm really going to lean into one of your comments that you gave, which is perfect, is you talked about luck and you talked about being at the right place at the right time. So this I really want to get across to everyone who's attending this session that you can look at it in the same uh, lens that Arsalan's looking at it is because you're on this session and you're dealing with these experts in the blockchain space, this might be your right place at the right time moment. So definitely, you know, reach out to these people and connect with them and uh, describe your skill set. And there may be, you know, a lifetime of opportunity ahead for you. We've got uh, great uh, people from Consensus and the Ethereum blockchain side, major financial institution, DTCC, settles all of the stock and bond transactions. We've got government uh, represented with Simba Chain. And then of course we've got Accenture, which is a you know, worldwide consulting firm that does you know, many things technology driven and especially really leaning into their blockchain practice. Okay, great. Uh, so the next thing I'd like to kind of cover is just to give everyone who's joined us kind of an idea of the projection for hires. And so Jody, I'm gonna kick this off with you and maybe you can tell me a little bit about, you know, what the hiring looks like for DTCC coming up end of this year or beginning of 2022. 
Um, there's really no need to wait. In fact, we have quite a few open positions as we speak, not just in one team per se. Um, like I said, you know, we have been in the space of innovating um, using DLT technologies and blockchain technologies for years now, it's about six, seven. So if anybody went to DTCC website and, and uh, searched for white papers, we have white papers starting all the way from 2015, which will also talk about the evolution. Some of the white papers that have come after also have you know evolved since what we have said in the beginning. Um, I am happy to share the links to the DTCC careers website um, and uh, some of the current positions that are open. But even if um, your background and experience doesn't isn't a hundred percent match, I would still recommend and encourage everyone to apply because some of the transitioning that you will end up doing will be could be organic as well. We have, it's, it's like, uh, there are two white papers uh, that I encourage everyone to read is, uh, one is Project Whitney and Project Ion. Um, those are two projects that, uh, that are in the process of uh, being uh, worked through internally. So we have requirements, job requirements that, you know, that are in technology specifically uh, in Corda or Hyperledger, uh, frameworks as well as Ethereum. Um, any, any technology that, any DLT technology background, not necessarily just these three, but you know, that you have some knowledge of, you can actually grow into other technologies and other space, other, um, other technologies and other platforms. And also, like I said, it's not just one team that's looking for, uh, that has job openings. We have openings in risk teams, which is like security, security architects, developers, um, blockchain architects, network administrators. We have need for DevOps and DevSecOps. So please uh, feel free to take a look at the um, open job positions. And um, like I said, even if you uh, don't have that extensive blockchain experience, you must still uh, indicate your interest in working in blockchain and then um, apply for the job role. Yeah, perfect. Jody, that's great. Sounds like a wealth of opportunity and a lot of different roles within uh, DTCC. So, uh, William, I'm going to jump over to you. And I know you've already thrown out a huge number <laughs> for your recruitment <laughs> yeah. target uh, coming up. So maybe lean into a little bit of that and talk sure. a little bit about beyond what you really focused on is more of the protocol side. Sure. Yeah. Um, so, um, Essentially, you know, our entire group, Consensus Software Inc. is now uh, about 450 people, uh, and we're looking to almost double and then double, double again at this point. So almost 200% increase on with our Series A, um, and that's across every single team. So um, we have lots of different teams, uh, including the protocol engineering team, that are looking to build out entire teams inter in internally inside of their products. So um, we're looking at things from the entire range from uh, developers, uh, Golang, Rust, Java, JavaScript, Solidity, all the way up through product managers, uh, creatives, um, creative directors, marketing, sales, literally anything you can think of inside of a technology company. Um, that's, that's something that we're hiring for. So um, we're building out our entire customer success team as our products grow. Uh, we have millions of users for some of our products. We need larger customer success teams to be able to handle that. So, you know, literally anything inside of those um, you know, project managers, uh, community managers, developer relations, um, all across the board. Yeah, perfect. Sounds like really a great dynamic growing company. And like Jody was talking about, just a wealth of opportunity, not just for strictly a blockchain developer or an architect. So great. Okay, uh, David, I'm going to jump over to you and talk about Simba Chain. And sounds like you've closed your Series A and what's looking at the roadmap for hiring in your uh, company. Right. Yeah. Thanks, John. So absolutely. And we did close our series A. We were um, really um, pleasantly surprised at how successful it was. And, and since then, it's been just about almost uh, six weeks ago, we've already been hiring like crazy. So we have about 50 people and uh, our aim is to double that in 2022. Um, and that's, it's a combination of um, 
you know, non-technical and technical. But, um, in, you know, in terms of the, the technical side, I also wanted to mention, I know you mentioned that we have government work in a big part of our businesses with the Department of Defense and Department of Energy and some governments outside the U.S., but also an equal amount of our work is in the private sector. So, I mean, we work with companies like some of our clients are Boeing and Dow and Caterpillar and also some major universities. So just so people understand that it's, it's a mix of both. Sure. Um, yeah. And so, so like on the non-technical side, we're one of the things we're focused on is becoming very customer centric and, and, and customer service um, orientated. So we're, we're staffing up and building a customer, a really, you know, world-class customer service team. Um, and those could be a combination of technical or non-technical or, you know, non-technical people that want to learn technical. Um, we're also um, hiring business development. We're expanding that. And it's um, both um, kind of new entry level and also more experienced business development. And it's people that are dealing, you know, client facing, developing new business, but also working with our partners, like different protocols like Hyperledger and Ethereum. Um, we're also looking for product. Product is a big part now of our strategy. We've got a really strong development team and a really strong business team, but now we got to bring it together with some product. So we've hired a couple of product managers and we're going to continue to hire those product managers and specialists um, that will manage the six different um, solutions that we, that we offer. And also internships uh, from a non-technical point of view, still talking about, I'll talk about technical in just a second, but we, we had this last January, we brought in six interns, and out of the six, we hired four permanently. We would have hired the other two, except they still had to finish university this semester. Uh, so we'll be looking at bringing in at least that big of a, a group coming in January. And so we're interviewing for those positions right now. And those happen to be more around business development and marketing. Uh, but we also bring in you know, technical developers in terms of uh, internships as well. But so I'm a non-technical guy, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you that the technical people ask me to, to tell you what we need. So uh, we've got a lot of technical needs right now. So we're looking for blockchain engineers um, like now um, and having, you know, Web3 solidity, um, you know, um, testing and auditing skills are really important. And then people that are just good technically, but non-blockchain, um, we're looking for people with security and compliance background. Um, but we have a list of, I mean, we're looking for, we're looking for system admin. We're looking for UX designers, both for applications and for our own products. Uh, we're looking for dev developers on the back end, um, front end, like I just mentioned. Um, we're looking for solutions architects. And that's a really, really cool position because you're kind of working with the business folks and working with the developers and, and, and going out and doing demos with customers. Um, we're looking for data scientists. Um, we're looking for DevOps practitioners. Um, I, we, have, we have a whole list and, and I can post a, an email in here. We are, we are just kind of new. I mean, we've been around just about four years. So we're still developing our HR um, group. In fact, we're hiring an HR manager. <laughs> and so we don't okay. have a, a place for you to go to look at all these jobs online, but I'll, I'll share my email and, and the person who's handling our HR. I'll share that email here in the chat so you guys can reach out to us. I say one one last thing. Sorry, too. Is the neat thing about us is that we have um, because we're blockchain agnostic and we're kind of use case agnostic. We provide tools that make it easy for you to build. Um, you're really literally every employee gets to see new use cases every day, um, and you're seeing it's almost like kind of like Shark Tank. You have you have businesses, existing large businesses, and also small startup companies that are bringing new use cases. So it's really fascinating. I think our our people are really stimulated by seeing you know, constantly new use cases and new innovation that's coming out and then building those and making it a reality. So it's a little bit about our company. So thanks. Yeah, no, David, that's great. And thanks for clarifying that around, you know, Boeing and some of the other commercial enterprises that you're working with. I just know that Simon has done a great job in the government space as well. Mm -hmm. And that's just why I was kind of highlighting that, but you got a yeah. great platform there and it really sounds like explosive growth. So thanks for the update there. Uh, so Arslan, uh, why don't you tell us about what the Accenture roadmap looks like for hiring in uh, the end of 21 and into 22 and, you know, what you're looking for there? Sure. Um, so I would say starting off with the easiest, I think anyone in the, in the panel here among several other organizations, probably the easiest um to, to land in this space is really if you have a background in security just given its complexity with um it, the engineering aspect but also just how 
how much work goes into the security side of things with any blockchain organization, whether they're business focused or technology, it, they will need security experts. So I would say that that's definitely the, the probably one of the most highly valued skills in this space. Now, in terms of Accenture, I think the, the, the search for Java Spring Boot developers is, is extremely heavy and will, will continue between now until the end of the year, um, blockchain or non-blockchain. Um, but specifically with blockchain, I mean, that's a very, those two things are very big desired skills. Uh, at the moment, I know we've slowed down a little, but I do expect us to really pick it up within the next uh, few months to the end of the year. Uh, and really just in the new year, kind of com complete a lot of our hiring uh, cycles. Um, but certainly something uh, other folks could add on to as well. Uh, but uh, again, really focused around, you know, product, technical, um, you know, based roles of engineering or, or security and, and things of that nature. Okay, perfect. And uh, yeah, thanks for that overview. And just as far as maybe the scale and scope of the hiring by Accenture, maybe you could just touch base on that real quick. Absolutely, that's a really good point. I should, I should have probably originally covered that. In terms of scale, uh, we're talking global in terms of you know Canada to the US to uh, the Middle East to Asia, uh, Australia, it, it's quite global. Um, now in terms of our US practice, we have a few focus areas uh, to the Northeast of New York, uh, to the West Coast of Seattle, kind of California. So there's definitely a number of regions. I mean, to Texas is a huge hot region as well. Um, we do a bunch of work there with a variety of different clients, um, DC uh, and things of that nature. So in terms of the US, certainly all over and, and global beyond that. And I would say it's, it's cross industry too. I mean, uh, there's demand in, in our health sector to government uh, quite heavily to banking probably being the most aggressive. So if you have that capital markets banking background, I would say that, that that's the best um, or rather the, the most aggressive we've been with with hiring, uh, but certainly still, um, you know, scaled out for supply chain and and security. Now, one thing I would add is our, our Europe practice focuses heavily in identity. We do work in the US and Canada as well, uh, but there's there's a huge focus of our business on identity based work. So if that's certainly an area that interests you, uh, I would say that's that that would be a huge part of our Europe practice within the US as well. One thing I, I should mention is we focus heavily on on digital dollar projects. So working with central banks of you know most of the major countries. So working with Bank of Canada, uh, the, the Fed in the US to Australia, Singapore, et cetera. So the central digital bank currencies is also a huge focus area of our business. Um, so that's also something that interests you. you. You would see several roles that pop up. And something I would suggest too, if you use the terms CBDC, uh, okay. again, CBDC, you'll see that quite often across different organizations, but certainly ours as well as a, as a huge uh, focus point. Yeah. And let's just, I, I'm going to go ahead and define that for the people who are joining that may not be familiar with the terms. So that's central bank digital currencies, which is CBDCs. And that's really where, you know, you might have a digital dollar or another country's uh, sovereign currency that they want to make digital. And that's what CBDCs are, uh, which is a great uh, transition as well, Arsalan. And kind of right now, I'd like to jump in and talk a little bit about maybe things that you've talked about a little bit here. You know, you talked about identity as being a core focus for the European team. And we know things like, you know, supply chain, trade finance, uh, you know, other things like that. So maybe at this point, let's kind of jump in and just talk about a few of these blockchain use cases that I think would be relevant to your individual companies that maybe these uh, attendees would want to learn about. So Jody, maybe you can talk about, you know, really from DTCC's perspective, what are kind of the key blockchain use cases that you see as, as being relevant? Um, sure, um, John. So we are in the financial services industry. And um, as you know, you know, in the securities today 
are settled at a T plus two cycle, which means a transaction plus two days. So every security takes up to two days to settle and clear. Leveraging blockchain and DLT as an underlying technology, we are working on this initiative to reduce the transaction life cycle to potentially T plus one, T plus half or T plus zero, which means instant settlement. Um, so every transaction gets cleared instantaneously. So we are taking a staggered approach to, that's one of our um, primary initiatives. Along with that, um, I have also shared some of the links to the white papers um, uh, in, the, in the chat. Uh, some of the other initiatives are we are also leveraging these technologies to be able to do private uh, market um, clearance and set, uh, settlements as well, private capital markets. So the thing is before, um, previously for uh, you know private companies, there was this medium of settle, settling transactions over a digital medium did not exist. So uh, that's, a, that's, that's kind of an, um, a lesser challenge uh, versus doing a T plus zero. And the reason I'll say that is, um, you know, from a technology standpoint, um, even if, even if uh, you know, blockchain or DLT you know, has the capability to settle a security instantaneously, it's the infrastructure of the capital markets that has to move along. So it's not just up to the technology. I mean, if you just take technology into consideration, we are already there. You know, we have DLT technologies that can scale, that can meet the needs. But then the capital markets infrastructure also has to be modernized to be able to enable that settlement. So as I said, you know, we have initiatives that are uh, working on reducing the settlement cycle significantly and also addressing some of the capital market needs. Yeah, that's perfect, Jody. And I think that hits the nail on the head is, you know, blockchain is capable of doing T plus zero settlement but is the market really ready, ready for T plus zero settlement? And so that's always the key is, you know, blockchain is definitely able to really move things along, but we also have to make sure that they fit within the current confines of the industry. So, great, and, okay. And yep. To back on that point, I just have one more thing because there was a question in the chat about regulations and how do you, uh, you know, maneuver around. So we are a financial services industry, which means that we are heavily regulated. We are regulated by SEC and some other, um, you know, regulators. So we tread within the risk markets, and we are, um, uh, we have to comply to existing regulations within, um, you know, blockchain as 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 rule as rules are given to us by SEC. But there are enterprise centric blockchain DLT applications that do not leverage security. Securities is what SEC, um, you know, um, you, you have to meet the compliance if, if you are trading in a security space, but otherwise um, regulations and regulatory uh, challenges are not a part. So just to expand on that question is that not every sector and every industry that's leveraging the value of these technologies comes under the radar of a regulator. You, if you're not leveraging the security or not trading in assets that are deemed a security, then you're not on the radar of an SEC. So you really don't have compliance you know, needs to meet. Just to set that expectation separately, it's not just about all the regulators you know, and not every company that's innovating in the space is on the radar of a regulator. Yeah, and that's perfect, Jody. And I think that that's a great uh, segue for me to talk to William about that because in the chat, I know for specific, he talked about a lot of the regulatory issues you would have to worry about are around the public space rather than the early adoption where it's in the private or permission blockchain space. So William, maybe you talk a little bit about that and then also you know, talk about kind of things that Ethereum's looking for or in the protocol space you know, things that people would want to have as far as these kind of skills or projects to work on. Sure. Um, and, and yeah, so, you know, uh, se several of our products that we're working on are, you know, either open source um, APIs or 
<clears throat> or you know, private blockchain solution type enterprise um, technologies um, at, the, at the base layer of the protocol engineering layer. But then there's also these layer two APIs that are being created that help with permissioning, scalability, um, different types of things that help you to create those internal blockchain structures that um, regardless of your use case uh, are going to help you to maintain that, that structure in your enterprise you know, company or you know, not even enterprise companies, smaller companies as well. Um, across the whole um, you know, uh, of consensus, however, um, that's, that's a very particular uh, protocol engineering uh, scenario. But um, mm -hmm. you know, MetaMask is our uh, you know, crypto wallet that we have. Um, a lot of the groups that we have are doing things in, in, uh, integrating with, with MetaMask and, um, and other <clears throat> the swap exchanges that they have. Um, so there's a lot of different things going on at Consensus uh, specifically. You know, we just reacquired Trium, which is an NFT group um, that we're building out right now. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of things happening. Uh, and so the skill set, the idea that the skill set and use cases are, um, you know, easily defined, uh, even in one company, our company, we have tons of different things going on. So, yeah. um, you know, if anybody has specific questions about specific groups or specific skill sets, feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to talk through very specific um, things as well. Yeah, and that's perfect. And just so everyone who's joined us knows, you know, Consensus is really the primary Ethereum development shop. And so if anyone's really interested in Ethereum as a protocol, it'd be great to follow up with William and talk to them, you know, about uh, Solidity or anything else around the Ethereum ecosystem. Okay, great. Uh, David, I know you talked about supply chain with the pharmaceutical uh, industry before you got really engaged with blockchain, but maybe you could talk about some of the use cases at SimbaChain that you think could be really relevant to the group here if they're interested in that type of implementation. Yeah, absolutely. It's just um, try to decide which one to talk about. So um, let me talk about one that's, uh, well, it's a Hyperledger implementation. So that might be a good place to start. So we're working with uh, Boeing, um, one of our, our bigger customers, and they're uh, deploying our the Simba Enterprise platform. It's called SEP. And it's um, and they're basically doing that. The use case is around uh, track and trace of parts that are used in aircraft, and you can imagine those are pretty critical. And and so SimbaChain uh, is deploying our enterprise platform, and um, Boeing is using that uh, to create a, a provenance solution. And and within that, they're very easily able to visually model and build out that use case and create assets and transactions and relationships. And what's really great about our tool is it's, it's got some pretty sophisticated search queries. So you're able to, um, to use GraphQL. So you're actually not only building a model visually, but you're able to, to search across blockchains and across smart contracts based on your assets and transactions that you build in that business model. So it's, it's really a, it's a fascinating uh, project. Um, I'll just mention one or two others, if you don't mind. Um, the other one is uh, we're working with a, a customer called Tokes. And Tokes, this is also somewhat supply chain, but it's, it's really fascinating in that Tokes is a um, Latin American restaurant and coffee provider. They, they have retail outlets, um, but they came to us and they said, hey, we want to use your solution because we want to be able to track our coffee supply from farm to table because they, they have this handcrafted premium coffees that they sell. And they want to be able to show that to their customers, the provenance on this came from this farm and that's why you're paying extra for it and that type of thing. But when they, but they decided to do that, they said, we want you to track, you know, we want to be able to track it from the farm through the co-op to the roaster, to the deshaler, to the distributor, to the restaurant, so we can show the whole provenance. But they also said, we want to build in some subjective factors into these smart contracts. In other words, we want to solve subjective factors using math, you know, and deterministic uh, blockchain. Some of those things were like, what about environmental? Are these farmers um, treating their land properly? Are they sustainable? Uh, are they, there's a, there's a real problem in Latin America about not paying their farmers fair wages. You may have to travel a long distance, work on a farm, and then Friday comes and you don't get paid. So we built fair wages into the smart contracts. So all these kind of, you know, social um, uh, kind of soft issues are now hard issues and they're in this contract and they can't move product unless they can show evidence of environmental reports and wage reports. Uh, what's really cool, I'm just saying we're working on phase two of that right now. So if you go into a Tokes restaurant and you get a cup of coffee, you can tip the person that serves it to you, but you can also tip the farmer that grew it. And it's, it's just, it's really fascinating to see how, um, how, how inequities in, in, in workers are being solved. These problems are being solved through, you know, technology and using smart contracts. 
And then just one others. Um, the other one that we're working on is really interesting because it's topical. We're working on a mis and disinformation project. And this is with uh, Flinders University in Australia. And the government of Australia has had an issue with, um, they issue videos and they issue other media pictures and press releases. And some of their adversaries have been manipulating that. You probably heard about deep, deep fakes in the news and this is very similar to that. So they wanted us to help them create a solution using SimbaChain's blockchain enterprise to be able to capture you know, the official data that they release on chain. So it's immutable, it can't be changed. It's kind of a master record. And they built a mobile app that you can, if you're, if you're an analyst with the Australian government, you see something that looks suspicious online, you can download it to your phone. And we use um, hashing. So, you know, cryptographic hashing can kind of tell you, yes, it's been manipulated, but we use syntactic hashing, which actually can rate how much manipulation there's been. So if you have a photo or a video, you capture it from the internet and you compare it to what's on the blockchain. So it's kind of a forensic tool to uh, help reduce and um, actually prevent, you know, mis and disinformation in social media. So uh, that's it. I'm sorry, three of them there for you. Oh yeah, and the great thing is, David, you actually hit on a perfect one that I want to talk about a little bit, is positive social impact. And I will say that you know, blockchain has definitely done a lot for positive social impact. And in fact, Hyperledger has a good social impact uh, group has a special interest group. So if anybody's interested in joining that, please do so. And I don't know if Bobby, you can post a link to the social impact group of Hyperledger, but that'd be wonderful if we could put that in the chat. Okay, perfect. Uh, so Arsalan, I'm gonna jump over to you. And I know we've already talked about identity and we've talked about CBDCs. But I know Accenture has really had a wealth of interesting projects in the blockchain space. So is there any other projects you might want to cover for the group that's joined us today? Sure. Uh, thank you, John. Really in, in the travel space, that's been a big one um, around, you know, again, still quite deeply linked with identity, uh, but around, you know, working with face scanners to scan your pupils and, uh, determine exactly you know your identity and where you're going being able to provide that update to the hotel to the airline that's certainly been an innovation project we've been working on uh, presenting every year at the world economic forum those are the type of things that you get to touch but at the same time we have a really interesting open source uh, focus as well um, and i would say you know if you're an avid developer you should definitely check out accenture's uh, open source projects in the blockchain space, which uh, I think one is actually featured in the Hyperledger um, GitHub community, which is uh, BAF, the blockchain automation framework. So certainly a, a huge focus of ours is, you know, some of the projects that we that we work on in an open source space to provide, you know, ease of, um, you know, implementation, being able to take the enterprise blockchain platforms and deploy a solution for production. Uh, in addition to you know, several other projects that we work on, um, both in the, in the public Ethereum, as well as in the, in the enterprise space. So definitely a huge area of focus. I think one of the, the biggest areas that we've always focused on since the last five, six years has been Corda. I would say that that would be a, a definitely a great space to check out is the Corda community, the, the Slack community that they have, the development projects. It's a huge focus of the development that we do. If you kind of connect with if you look up blockchain and multi-party systems within our within LinkedIn and, and look for recruiters in that space specifically, you'll, you'll certainly find that uh, as you connect with them, that's a it's a huge focus area, um, specifically with that technology and all the work that we do with it. Perfect. Yeah. Thanks, Arsalan. That's a lot of great extra information, and I know you've done a lot in the digital twin space and supply chain as well. So you know, really, there's a wealth of projects at, at Accenture. If, anyone's interested. Uh, the other thing that I want to kind of cover here real quick, and uh, we'll go through this and then we'll get into a little bit of the Q&A directly from the audience, is I know we have a variety of people on the group meeting today that are at different points in their career travel. But the one I want to ask about here is for people that are really trying to, you know, first engage with the blockchain space, and they may be a recent graduate. So I know, uh, David, you talked a little bit about, you know, your six internships that you had at SimbaChain. 
but I'm going to kind of go around here and just, you know, each company, I want to have you talk a little bit about, you know, internship or mentorship opportunities. Uh, and so Jody, I'm going to go over to you for talking about that a little bit. Absolutely. So um, first thing um, uh, I will echo what David said, um, 2015, 20, uh, 13 to 2015, if you wanted to learn anything about blockchain, it was, it was difficult. You know, you had to read the white paper, conceptualize the concept of the underlying cryptography and how does consensus happen. So it's a complex technology to understand. So I will let, let me begin by saying that nobody gets to understand what blockchain truly is with the first read of, read of the white paper or the first brush at one single technology. And, and the complexity also adds because every platform comes with its own technology stack. So what I would like to recommend is even before we get into internship opportunities or learning opportunities, leverage what your past experience has been and find that technology stack that has a pathway or a segue into your future DLT platform of choice. Let's start from there because then understanding the concept of blockchain, understanding what these technologies are meant to do will become easier for you to adapt. And once you get the, once you understand what these technologies can do, horizontally, you know, learning other technologies and platforms will become way more easier. So begin by that. Within DTCC itself, DTCC, encourages learning and mentorship immensely. The culture is extremely, extremely that of um, encouraging growth. Every employee is looked at as, as, a, as a leader internally. So I have very good things to say about the company. In fact, we, as I said, you know, we are the founding member or, you know, we are of Hyperledger Foundation too. In fact, um, my, my leadership was saying that the first meetup for Hyperledger was held in the DTCC headquarters office in um, Jersey City. <laughs> and nice. we, we are also founding members of various other alliances like Introvert Alliance. We work, we are the yeah, premier members of Enterprise Ethereum Alliance and various other alliances depending upon what organization you come into. There may be other alliances and partnerships that organization is tied into. And even though they are membership driven organizations, as an employee at DTCC, you have access to, look, to read all the material and all the learning and all the sessions from those alliances. So that's an excellent opportunity. The other aspect I want to highlight is most of these open source technologies within DLD platforms are encouraging members to join their community. So a lot of learning material is available for you for free. Just like how Bobby was showing in her introductory slides of all sure, the learning sure. opportunities on Hyperledger. Um, and, um, you know, Colin mentioned about R3. R3 just had a Kodakon conference two weeks ago, and they have more than 100 hours of consumption of content free for you to access. So that should give you some, you know, some information or at least something to begin with. Go look into the docs of all of these um, platforms. You know, they start from the basics, uh, looking to see some of the applications that these platforms are doing. Each platform, DLT platform, has that specific feature set that ties into an industry and that gives the benefit to a particular application or uh, or a particular industry. So also find that, you know, that may be an, another easier way for you to lean into the blockchain space. Let's say you come from a supply chain background, you know, you work for a company where, you know, supply chain is critical. So see, look into Hyperledger Fabric, Hyperledger Sawtooth, because, because you understand the business side of it, understanding the technology also will become easier for you. So these are some of the tips for me, you know, to, that I can share coming from, you know, outside within the uh, community and as well as inside from within DTCC. Yeah, perfect, Jody. And I think that's a really comprehensive overview of ways to get into the space and opportunity. And thanks for that. And then William, as far as uh, just kind of, you know, I think Jody covered a great spectrum here of how you can get engaged 
but let's just maybe touch base on what you may have as far as internships or mentorships at Consensus sure. as well. Sure. Um, I, I'd love to talk a little bit more generally about this topic because uh, it, it, this kind of harkens right. back to some of um, my basic I information that I always give to people when they ask, how do I find a new job? Right. So, you know, what, regardless of the industry, the best way to go find a new job is to go out and directly network with people. So don't feel, okay. don't feel shy about it. Don't feel, don't feel like somebody's going to make fun of you, you know, go to LinkedIn, find people that have the job you want, message them and say, Hey, I'm really interested in this type of role. I'm really interested in getting into this field. Do you mind having a, a virtual coffee with me? Do you mind if they're in the same area as you, do you mind having a real coffee with me? Masks included, <laughs> hopefully right now. Um, but um, uh, in general, the, the best advice that I can give is go out and talk to people, get them, get advice from people. You never even know, like the, going back to that luck, right place, right time situation. Yep. Um, you don't know how many of my friends that I've given this in, uh, this information to before have done this. And then somebody's saying right back to them, actually, we're hiring, right? So okay. David was saying that their, their, their roles aren't even posted places. If somebody messaged David and was like, hey, I'm a solutions architect. And I'm really interested in this type of role. Do you know how I get into the blockchain space? He'd be like, yeah, come work here. <laughs> right. <laughs> so um, those are the types of things that um, put yourself out there. Um, don't be afraid. Uh, you know, if, if anybody needs a little advice on how to do that, this is another thing that I'm happy to mentor you on. Um, shoot me a message. I'm happy to okay. chat about this type of stuff as well. Um, as far as consensus is concerned, um, even though we're about 450 people at the, at the moment, um, we're still kind of in the infancy of our operations stage. Um, I'd say most likely we'll have internship classes by next fall. Right now, okay. our internship programs um, are more focused on singular teams saying um, with people who've reached out to them in that way saying, Hey, there's this person that I think is really smart and I want to bring them on. And I have a, a, a thing that I want to do with them this, this for the next three months. Is that okay? Um, and then we kind of run through that process, um, but we don't have any structured interviews selection or um, anything like that. However, I think especially in this space, people are really excited about those types of messages. Um, that's what LinkedIn is supposed to be used for. It's not supposed to be me harassing people for new jobs. It's supposed to be people going out and uh, and and networking with each other and finding those connections themselves. So um, that's my that's my uh, advice that I give to everybody um, uh, when it comes to just recruiting in general. Yeah, that's that's great advice, and I see Bobby's coming on here, so I'm just going to just quickly touch base with David and our salon about internships. And then I'm gonna uh, reach back over to Bobby and see how we're doing on the time schedule here. So David, uh, you talked about six interns mm. from the last uh, go around. Are you looking for right. another six at this point or how does that look in your view for new people coming on that way? Yeah, absolutely. Well, we don't have an exact number. So we're kind of just looking at who the right people are. And, um, you know, kind of, again, the constant the consistent theme here is about you don't really have to have blockchain experience. But what we do, one of the requirements for at least in the business development, customer service internships that we did and customer, mostly business development, there was one customer service person, but uh, in that business development internship, uh, which is what I happen to be responsible for, we looked at when we looked at candidates, we looked at, well, they were all in university for one thing, but we looked at, um, are they in a blockchain club? And just, well, if the school, if the university has a blockchain club, are you involved in it? Because if they are, that tells me they have a passion because they're doing that extracurricular. Sure. And then, and then the other thing is if they don't have a blockchain club, if you thought about starting one, and if that's not something that you've done, are you going to any meetups? I mean, are, are, is, does a person express some kind of desire to learn about blockchain and, and, and willingness to learn about it? So I think that was the most important thing for us bringing in interns. And, and that's what we're looking at going forward. Uh, it doesn't really matter what, you know, what's your graduate, what you're studying. I mean, we have people that were studying finance. We have people that were studying liberal arts. We have, I mean, all, all kinds of different backgrounds. One was an engineer. And of the six that, you know, went through the internship, uh, three, two of them became full-time business development. One became full-time customer service. She's kind of shaping our customer service group. And then the other one into DevOps. So they kind of just right. getting in and learning. And, and you have a lot of opportunities. Our environment is very flat. We're a startup. It's kind of changing now that we have a little Series A. But, but the nice thing is it creates opportunities at a startup that 
you're going to wear hats and do things that you would never do if you went to work for Oracle or Google. You get to really, we, you get to push yourself and stretch yourself a little bit further than you would at a big organization. And, and we like that because, you know, we find that, you know, some of the interns, they don't know what they can't do. So <laughs> it's kind of refreshing to have them around because they don't feel like there is any obstacles. So they go out and, and they get really aggressive, but yeah, so we're definitely going to have another group of interns um, on the non-technical side beginning January. So we'll be interviewing for those um, between now and the end of the year. And then on the technical side, too, we have quite a few openings where um, our dev, dev team is bringing in uh, interns uh, to work on different projects. We have a big initiative right now. Uh, we're going to be we have launched uh, an NFT platform. It's kind of a platform that we're going to provide customers on a white label basis, you know, customers that want to have their own NFT platform that they can brand themselves. And we have a, 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 quite a few interns working on that right now. So, so yeah, definitely internship program is alive and well. So I put my information in the chat. So if you would like, please contact me. Thanks. Okay, perfect. Thanks, David. And thanks, William, for going over the networking component, which this is definitely falling into that networking category. Uh, so the final one we're going to do, and then I'm going to turn it back over to Bobby here is going to be Arsalan, anything around internships at Accenture that you want to kind of talk about and um, get out to the community here? I think Arsalan had to drop. Okay, he had to drop. Okay, well, no problem. You guys did a great job. And Bobby, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you and uh, let you take it from here. I had to find my Zoom control. <laughs> no problem. Okay, go ahead, Bobby. Okay, so uh, one of the things that people were talking about were the internship programs that are available. So uh, Hyperledger also has mentorship programs um, and internships available. Um, after Jim talks about um, what's next, um, I have a slide to show you some resources on Hyperledger um, and their resource page is called um, wiki.hyperledger. And I'm gonna show you how to, how to use that to find out the information you need, or I like to say the information you're attracted to um, so that you can read about it um, and find out about it. So I'm gonna turn it over to Jim to talk about what's next for our next piece in the series, which is going to be November 4th information on our website. Take it away, Jim. Hi, Bobby. Can you hear me okay? Uh, Am I coming through? Jim, you're a little bit broken up. Uh, okay. But I can, I can hear you. So just go forward and we'll go yeah, on with slow, it. But like usual. Um, so November 4th at Target is to have a, a second session that's going to focus on uh, taking a look at the employer side of it, trying to understand what do companies look for um, when they're hiring. So tonight we've obviously had a great selection of companies that certainly have, uh, in a sense, a, a current bench of blockchain talent. And clearly many of them are also looking to get more. Um, the November 4th session, we want to talk a little bit about, I'm trying to answer questions of um, not only what does the company look at as a process, different a little bit one to the other in terms of how the hiring process goes, um, how you prepare for that. But we'll also talk a little bit about um, the culture of the companies. Um, so they're different. Um, it's um, in many ways in terms of how teams are organized, managed, and run, um, not the same one to the other. Try to get perspective on that as well. And try to answer the question of maybe uh, try to get some sense of what it's like to work here in different types of environments. And there are very, very, there are big differences. And so I think part of that is going to be that you as an individual, if you have experience, you probably know what you like and don't like as a work environment. If you're new to all of this, then you probably have a lot to learn. Hopefully the session will give you some feedback in that area as well. But it will help shape, I think, your view of maybe the kind of organization and the kind of teams you want to work on. And it's not just at a company level, in bigger companies like and some of the other ones, you're going to find that they have many, many teams. And, you know, one team is but not the right, uh, but either focus or area you want to be in, um, you have opportunities to look elsewhere as well. And that's, that's you know, an advantage, I guess, of large organizations. But certainly there is a wide market and a high demand. So hopefully um, 
you can bring your ideas and your focus, um, your experience, if you will, uh, to design your own what I call roadmap and to try and find what I call the right role, the right team, and so on. And there's many different aspects to that. So that's really what November 4th is going to focus on um, in general. So, Bobby, back to you. Bobby, are you there? Uh, yep, I, yeah, it takes, takes me a while with all my screens to find the controls okay. <laughs> They're behind things. Um, thank you, Jim. Yes, and then, then the um, November 18th one will be run out of Princeton, um, possibly live. That would be interesting, uh, or hybrid. Um, okay. And that talks more about how do you get ready for the career fair where you're going to be sitting with people from Accenture, Consensus, DTCC, and Simba Chain and possibly others um, at a table saying, you know, I, I heard what you said, I'd like to talk about this. They'll talk to you, they'll ask you questions. So in order to be ready for that, you, you need a LinkedIn profile, you need a resume, and I'm gonna show you how to organize that so it's not painful um, in that session. And then we do have the career fair where, like we said, we put you in front of people with jobs for you to sit and talk to them and ask them exactly what they're looking for. Um, the other th part that I told you about was getting involved in the Hyperledger community. Now, the hyperledger.org website, that's the external face um, for the world to see. Uh, the wiki page on the other side is like the internal workings of Hyperledger. Now, because it's a foundation, um, most of the people there with this open source community are trying to learn how to use the platforms that Hyperledger provides, you know, get them in to work for their business. So the technology is, you know, there for anyone to copy and develop, which is wonderful. But you're like, where do I get started? So here is the wiki page. And again, across the top, it's just wiki.hyperledger.org. You'll see all the projects. If you drop this carrot down, it'll list all the projects. Each one has a wiki page. Each one meets bi-weekly and the calls are open for everyone. So if you wanna know what's going on with Firefly or if you wanna know what's going on with Fabric, Fabric has several calls. They have a community call, they have a developer's call and they have a documentation call. So there's um, healthcare, um, SIGs have calls during the weeks. Uh, they have uh, different sections for um, clinicals, for different projects in different areas of healthcare. Um, same thing, again, my favorite, if you're breathing, you need to go to the climate change um, SIG and figure out how you can get involved and help. Um, you know, so there's so many and all the resources are on that wiki page. So the groups, those are the special interest groups in the working group. Um, John and I co-chair the learning materials working group where I put a link in before. That'll give you every documented resource that Hyperledger community um, has collected. You can go right to the project pages and get their documentation, their presentations. There's a wealth of information. So that is a very good resource. Again, a lot of people on the call are like, I don't know really much about blockchain and I really don't know how to get involved. I call this blockchain light. It's consortiums. So it's people who work in the industry. So they're not really talking about, did you see line code 502? There's an error in that line code. You're not going to have any of those conversations in these groups. These groups are, again, social impact. That's where we got the idea for the Giving Chain project that will be in production um, by the end of next year, hopefully. Um, social uh, Supply chains, they work on supply chains, give you um, different... Uh, competitors together talking about the best way that they can work together with this new technology, keeping their secrets and keeping their information, but yet working together to get the best possible solutions. Um, and, and again, this is a new resource that David Boswell just dropped to us a few days ago. Um, he's collected all of the YouTube videos where um, these groups have been presenting their ideas. Um, so the projects make the code and these guys use the code. It's like they get the toy box. Um, so again, it's really fascinating to watch what those groups are doing. So that's just another resource. And again, this is the learning materials working group. Our calls um, are every week, every other week. And there is a link right there to join the call or the meeting notes. 
And every one of these groups, if you want to get further involved with just reading, um, which we encourage you to do, voyeur this whole community, um, every one of the groups usually has a subscribe button somewhere on the page. And by selecting that and joining the group, all that means is you'll get um, emails that go to the mailing list for that group which is interesting because then you know what they're talking about at the meetings, you know, if you want to go to a meeting. And again, if you go to um, the main page in Hyperledger, there is a calendar of public meetings, which um, shows a daily report of what meetings are happening and the Zoom link. And every one of those meetings on that calendar is open to everyone. Show up, you can say, I, you know, was it a meetup with Bobby? She said that I could, you know, come in and listen and everybody will just applaud you and welcome you into the community. Um, I think that's about it. Um, and again, on the Learning Materials Working Group, we have a resource library, which has all the information on the special interest groups, the projects. Um, so again, walk through this environment, take your time, spend, I know I spend most of my life there. So. <laughs> You can get lost. And that's it for us tonight. Does anybody have any questions? I'm going to go back to the question and answer screen. Yeah, that's perfect, Bobby. Thanks for going through that run through. And I will also say a little bit of a shout out to the Learning Materials Working Group for kind of bringing together all of these resources for a good onboarding. So I would welcome anybody who's interested in, you know, getting more information about learning materials in Hyperledger, either reach out to myself or Bobby, and we're more than glad to connect you with a lot of great resources for you know learning about the protocol or getting involved in the community. But uh, the thing I wanted to go back to is we still have Jody, David, and William here. So if there's any specific questions we wanna cover on just the few minutes we have left here, why don't you just go ahead and raise your hand uh, and then I'll go ahead and make sure you're unmuted and then you can just ask your question of anyone of the panelists here. And I really appreciate everyone's engagement in the chat. This has been one of the most active and uh, engaging chats from a session. And I really appreciate everyone getting in there and really you know, firing that up. So let's see if I got anybody who's raising their hand here. Bobby, if I'm missing somebody, let me know. I think we covered everything so I think well. we did too. No questions. I, I think you yeah. had such exceptional panelists. And I want to thank uh, Jody, David, and William for really doing a great job. And also Arsalan, he had to uh, leave the session here. But really, we couldn't have done it without you. And I think we can just see the explosive growth in the blockchain space and really the talented uh, team members and individuals you'd be able to work with if you get into the blockchain space. So, you know, really it's a wonderful opportunity and everyone should definitely take advantage of all the resources that's been provided by our panelists today and uh, definitely engage with the Hyperledger community. Yes, thank you everybody for coming. We'll post this uh, video on our website um, if you're interested and I'll make a challenge for everybody. I'll put the slides up on the learning material homepage. <laughs> see if you guys can get on there and, and, and uh, grab the PowerPoint. <laughs> so hopefully I'll see everybody Wednesday at the NFT event. Um, Bobby? Yes. I do have one question. Can you scrape the chat and include that as well? Um, I already did. Okay. You want me to put that somewhere on the wiki page or you want that on the web page? Probably the web page would be the easiest. Perfect. And you got, you got all of it, Bobby, because I, on this session, I wasn't capturing all of the chat, but you have all the sub and substance of it. Um, I've saved it in a folder. Perfect. And okay. I just what that folder is because I have no idea where. <laughs> yeah, no, no um, problem. Okay. Well, thank you everyone for joining uh, this evening. And if you need anything, reach out to any of our panelists or reach out to Bobby and myself and Jim. And we're glad to help and connect you with anyone that could be a resource for you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you guys Thank you, so everybody. much. Yep. Take care. Bye. Bye.